four uh, of the addendum um, starts where problem three left off. It says for problem three, what is the frequency of the emitted photon if this electron jumps to the n equals one state? So it could either ask it this way, it could say what is the wavelength of the emitted photon if this electron jumps to the n equals one state, or it could say what is the frequency of the emitted photon, okay, uh, in this uh, n equals one state, <clears throat> if it makes this jump to the n equals one state. So uh, remember what we learned is that the energy is negative 13.59 z squared over n squared, okay, we can make a plot of this energy as a function of n, when n equals one, you have n equals one, you have, it starts out negative 13.59 z squared. So you're basically down here. When n is equal to two, what happens to the energy? It's one fourth of the original energy. So on the graph, it would be one fourth of this would be visually somewhere like around here, right? When n equals to three, it's one ninth of this. So visually it's over here. And then n equals to four, it's one sixteenth of that. So it's basically plateauing. So it's going like this. Okay, the energy is asymptotically reaching zero. So that means when you go from n equals one to two to three, uh, your energy is getting higher, right? So when an electron receives energy, <clears throat> that's called absorption. It absorbs energy. It jumps from the one state to the second state. Okay? From, and then if it receives enough energy, it jumps from the first state to the third state. Right? In astronomy, we learned that stars give off absorption spectrum. The electrons absorb. Now, how does that work? Uh, a star tends to have a core, a very hot core, which is, acts as a solid. It radiates in all wavelengths of uh, the electromagnetic spectrum. So we learned from Kirchhoff's laws that uh, solids or very hot, dense gases give off continuous spectrum. So the core of stars uh, emits radiation of all wavelength. Okay? When this radiated energy goes through the atmosphere of the star, the atmosphere of the star has certain atoms in it, hydrogen, helium, and uh, the other atoms, but most predominantly hydrogen. When the electrons of the hydrogen atom uh, absorb this energy, the electron makes a certain jump. It absorbs that energy, right? So it could be hydrogen, helium, or any of the atoms it has. They make these appropriate jumps, and what we end up seeing on Earth is what's known as an absorption spectrum. The absorption spectrum, we see a continuous band of uh, uh, electromagnetic energy. Some of the energy has been absorbed, right? So we see the colors, okay? And then once in a while, we see a dark line, dark line, dark line, dark line. So the background will all be colored and certain lines will be missing. So stars give off what are known as absorption spectrum or dark line spectrum, okay? Now, the opposite of this is when the electron jumps from the higher energy to the lower energy, higher to lower, higher to lower. And it doesn't have to jump from the second to the first, the third to the first. It could jump from third to the second, fourth to the second, fifth to the second, and it could jump from fourth to third, fifth to third, or so on, you know? Uh, that's called emission spectrum. When it jumps down, it emits a photon of a, uh, uh, energy equal to the difference of the two energies, right? What kind of objects give off emission spectrum in astronomy? Those are cool, tenuous gases. Cool gases, or it could be a little bit hot gas too, you know, uh, activated uh, gas. Uh, those give off con uh, emission spectrum gases. In astronomy, we call these nebulae. Plural is nebulae. They give you emission. Now, how do emission spectrum look? This time, what's going to happen is the background is going to be dark. And once in a while, we're going to see a photon of a certain wavelength of color. So the background is going to be uh, dark, and then you're going to have certain colors. 
maybe red, red, you're going to have maybe green, and then you're going to have um, blue, uh, if I had blue marker here, I would put blue, but over here, the background is going to be colored, right? Uh, so the background is going to have a certain color, green, and then you might have red, but the lines are going to be dark. Those are dark lines. Here, the background is going to be dark. The background is going to be dark. And the lines are going to be colored. Those are emission spectra. So it's called bright line spectra or emission spectra. Okay? Emission or bright line. These are called dark line or absorption spectra. So, if I want to know what is the frequency of the emitted photon, what do I do? Well, in this case, it's jumping from the, um, <clears throat> the third state. Remember, it was originally in the third state, and then it's jumping to the n equals 1 state. So, the difference of the energies, E3 minus E1, it's going to be equal to the energy of the emitted photon. And remember, in the first problem, we said... Uh, a photon carries energy proportional to its frequency. So it's equal to HF, right? And uh, so now that's all basically we put here. Negative 13.59, okay? Uh, Z is, uh, in that case, it was 25 squared over 3 squared minus, what's the energy of the first state? Negative 13.59. 25 squared over 1 squared, okay? And that's going to be equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. <clears throat> now, when I do this, I have to remember that th this one was in electron volts. So I have to convert back to joules because the Planck's constant that I have is in joules, okay? Okay, so what I end up having is this. The, this minus came from the change in energy, so then you have another minus because the energy that it has in the first state is also negative. So the two negatives cancel, and you end up this one minus this one. This one is a smaller number than that one, so it's positive. Okay? Planck's constant 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 times the frequency. But remember, uh, one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now joule and this joule cancel, and you get the answer, right? The electron volts cancel. So take your answer, multiply it by 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19, okay? <clears throat> and then divide that by the, uh, the Planck's constant to get the frequency. So divide that by 6.626, divide it by 10 to the negative 34, and then the frequency comes out to be 1.823 times 10 to the 18. And this is hertz, cycles per second. 1.823 times 10 to the 18 uh, cycles per second, okay? And that is the answer. Now, if I want the answer in terms of wavelength, I say that's equal to the speed of light over the wavelength, 3 times 10 to the 8 over wavelength, so then I cross multiply, the wavelength comes up there, the frequency goes down there, the wavelength equals, so I take my answer and I invert it to the power of negative one and then I multiply it by three, multiply it by 10 to the eight. I have 1.6455 times 10 to the negative 10 and that's meters, okay? How many nanometer is that? Okay, uh, well, uh, you, if you go this way, one, and then that will reduce to 10 to the minus a nine, right? So it's 0.16455 nanometer. Is that a visible <coughs> electromagnetic spectrum? Can we see it? No, the visible spectrum goes from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. Anything shorter wavelength than 400 nanometer is ultraviolet, right? So this will show up as an ultraviolet light. We will not be able to see it visibly, right? 
<clears throat> now, one of the interesting things we can do is we could use the same equation to predict what the emission lines of hydrogen are. These are very common. Uh, they are called bomber lines, and the bomber lines are observed in the emission spectrum of um, uh, gases, and the absorption bomber lines are observed in the abs uh, absorption lines of stars. Why? Because hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. What are the bomber lines? You should know these by heart. There are four bomber lines, and they are actually visible, okay? These are bomber lines of hydrogen. They are 656 nanometer, 486 nanometer, 434 nanometer, and 410 nanometer, okay? Four particularly visible lines that tell us it's a telltale sign that what we are looking at is something that contains hydrogen, right? So we could also observe these in the uh, lines of uh, Jupiter and other planets that also have an abundant supply of hydrogen. How do these occur? Okay. How do these occur? Well, it ends up that this one occurs when the electron in the hydrogen atom jumps from the uh, third to the second orbit. Remember, large wavelength means small energy. So the energy difference of the third and second orbit is not too much. This one occurs when the electron jumps from the fourth to the second. This one occurs from the fifth to the second. And then this one occurs when the electron jumps from the sixth to the second. So let's go ahead and prove one of these. We don't have to go through all of them. Let's say we want to do fifth to the second. So what would we do? We would say the energy of the fifth minus the energy of the second is equal to HF, right? But since we're more interested in wavelength, we would say what? HC over lambda, right? What is the energy of the fifth? Negative 13.59 Z squared over N squared. What is Z for the uh, hydrogen atom? It has only one proton, right? So you don't even have a Z. And then what's N? N is 5. So let's all put that in. 5 squared. So since Z is 0, that just became 1. Minus negative 13.59 over 2 squared. And then let's put all, this, all of this in. 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. 3 times 10 to the 8. <clears throat> then we have the wavelength. So here's what we'll do. We'll first calculate this for now. And then what I do is whatever number I have, cross multiplies goes over there, the wavelength goes up here. So here's my conclusion. The wavelength equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34, 3 times 10 to the 8. And then this whole number came out to be 4.566. Two, 4 times 10 to the negative 19. So what do I do? I divide this by this. So invert the number that I have. Lambda equals uh, 4.353 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. And then in nanometer, what is that? 1, 2, 435.3 nanometer. Okay? And that is one of the bomber lines. That's a jump of the electron from the fifth to the second orbit, okay? And then you can go through, prove the other ones too. One of them should be about 410, and the other one should be around um, 486, and the other one should be around 656. It should appear as a red, um, a green, and two violet lights, okay? So now you can see this whole topic of emission spectra, absorption spectra, how to calculate it. It's particularly useful in astronomy and in some other fields like this, okay? So you can see how to do calculations like this. Thank you very much.